Manchester United and Newcastle United. We're in the company of Frank McClintock, Lou Macari, Clive Allen and Rodney Marsh. And Rod just looked over his left shoulder and said, that's what it's all about. What a day. You know, football is, uh, is life with the volume turned up, isn't it? And I just hope that today is a great game, Richard. I feel that, that the key to this game is about Newcastle. Can the Newcastle back four players hold Manchester United? If they can, they've got a chance. And, pleased to say, in recent seasons, they have reintroduced the tradition of singing the cup final hymn, Abide With Me. And I think that Desiree is about to lead the singing to the accompaniment of the band of Her Majesty's Royal Marines, Portsmouth. that we've got a game on. Now we know that it's the FA Cup final. Top team are on duty today, I'm delighted to say. Our match commentary duo, Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Well, the final FA Cup final of the 20th century. The first between two teams named United. And Andy, as always, uniting interest all around the world. Without a doubt, Mark. Uh, it's a fabulous day. I know it's only a year since you and I were sat here, but each year I come back here because I, like most of the lads in the studios, have special memories of this place. It's sad to see it go. I have to say that, but that's progress. But it's a wonderful, wonderful setting. It's another magnificent occasion. It would be fitting if we leave the millennium, Mark with a game worthy of these two great teams. Not maybe the, the players at Newcastle at the moment, but these two great teams. Uh, well, Newcastle, as you look around this ground, the turnout of their fans and replica jerseys is testimony to the devotion to the club. If ever a band of supporters deserves a trophy, then you couldn't argue with that lot in our shot now. Well, Newcastle need to switch their game back on. They've been soft pedalling since that semi-final. They've not won a game since then. Whereas Manchester United really arriving at Wembley at full speed. Yeah, I think that's true. And I'm always wary and worried about teams that come to Wembley, Martin, and try to switch on. I've always think that if you're playing well, then go and play well and win football matches. That's what breeds confidence and belief. I think, unlike athletes and other sportsmen who can peak for certain parts of the year, a footballer gets his... Well, he peaks by playing well and winning matches, as United have peaked for the last five months since they last lost a game. But Newcastle have good individual talent, 
United have got to do more than just turn up here today to win this trophy. But I think they know that. And that's what makes it a very, very tough game to call. It is a wonderful setting. All the viewers, I'm sure, will be recalling memories of previous cup finals. What Those was up your in the first time there, there? What was your first final? Do you remember? Yes. What one was that? 1924? Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the Matthews <laughs> final, which I watched on television in 1953, so that was a good way to start. Alec Ferguson and many of his Manchester United team know what Wembley demands. Not of the talents, that's taken for granted, but of the temperament. And I can uh, bring you uh, some news from the United camp that the manager had to delay his team decision because they have been hit by a virus and four of the side have virtually risen from their beds to play today, the Neville brothers, Ronnie Johnson and Paul Scholes. And I think for a man who's a, first and foremost a football man, but also with a streak of sentimentality in him as well, for Alec Ferguson, for players who've done so much, that must have been a devilishly difficult decision, whether to say, well, they're not quite fit enough and I'll put others in who are, or to reward them for all that they've done this season. He's chosen the latter course, and let's hope for the sake of the players that that, that illness goes away as quickly as it arrived towards the end of the week. It just depends how much it, it took out the mark. If it sapped a little bit more strength than they would have needed today, because they're going to need an awful lot. Talked about the way this whole day, this whole event, not just the pitch itself, but the whole thing goes towards sapping your strength that little bit quicker than a normal football match. So I'm sure Alec will have a keen eye on all four of those players. Well, the Newcastle players, with their sense of superstition, are pleased that they're in a different dressing room this year, that the team bus arrived second and not first like last year. That's the sort of little nuances that players reach for because there are some bad memories, and Alan Shearer's been speaking about them to wipe away from what happened to Newcastle a year ago. He said he felt guilty going around the northeast in a so-called celebration parade after that 2-0 defeat by Arsenal. There's a huge incentive in this man alone and the others who are part of that side that lost to repay the faith on Tyneside. And in a manager, they have, of course, a man who's won the FA Cup, 1997, Rude Hollett steered Chelsea to success. Well, the fans have been waiting. You're getting the glimpse of the players before those in the stadium. And Andy and I will pause so you can appreciate the welcome for Manchester United and Newcastle United FA Cup final 1999. season when the FA Cup has had to fight for its place in the pecking order but the epic semi-finals at Villa Park a reminder of its compelling drama next season the traditional dates will change to accommodate the Champions League but the 
the FA Cup has shown its durability as well as its wonderful sense of drama. And I'm sure that will continue to be the case. The staging of the day also being used to back England's bid to host the World Cup finals in 2006. Men of influence in international football circles are the guests of the Football Association. It's a campaign we wish every success. Who are accompanied by the Lord Duro, Chairman of Sun Life and Provincial Holdings, representing AXA and representatives of the Football Association. Ladies and gentlemen, Presentations. His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, making it a, a royal occasion. The Duke and Duchess of Kent, great supporters of the Football Association, are also with him. Well, will there be some Dutch footballing courage for Newcastle today? from Rude Hullet. The Prince might have had to help Prince Harry through the dismay of Arsenal not being amongst the prize winners this season. It's been a distracting week for Roy Keane. But he stayed on the team bus when Manchester United arrived in the company of Alec Ferguson. They had a a long talk for a good ten minutes. Maybe the manager helping the captain resume the correct attitudes for what lies ahead here at Wembley. Very much in the glare of publicity again. Suspended Dennis Irwin. They've lost another first choice defender, Yapstam, though he is on the bench. David May, who didn't play enough games for a Premiership medal, will get an FA Cup memento today, one way or the other. In midfield, places for the two who are suspended next Wednesday, Roy Keane and Paul Scholes. And in attack, Alec Ferguson has gone for Andy Cole and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Dwight York, in particular, a victim of his own importance for the Champions League final. Well, that's a pretty familiar-looking formation. Managers don't like change, and Alex is two from his normal back four, particularly May and Neville, that left-hand side, along with Johnson and Gary Neville as right back. And it's important, I think, there's an area where Newcastle are going to try and exploit. I think it might be 
and Ronnie Johnson and David May's partnership. I'm sure that might be an area they've targeted because ahead of that, with Arsenal's, I think this is the strongest midfield quartet in the country. Nothing between either sides there. Beckham with quality of coming wide and drawing crosses in to test anyone. Scholes with the forward running of a real goal scorer and a threat. Giggs, not only the ability to go wide and cross, but to go past the front men, either running with the ball or without, and into a scoring position. And I just wonder, normally when we talk about Manchester United, we talk about a front man dropping off, whether it be Sheringham, whether it be York. I just wonder today if we're going to see two out-and-out -out front men. Steve Harper's recent form has given him the edge over Shea Given in the Newcastle goal. Defender Laurent Chave has proved his fitness after missing the last seven games with a knee injury, but Duncan Ferguson has only made it as far as the bench. The key decisions for Ruud Hullet, the full-back and wide midfield positions, it's Andy Griffin and Rob Lee on the right, Didier Domi and Norberto Solano on the left, and only five of the 98 final side start today. Well, if Newcastle United are going to win this game, then they have to do it from a base of, I think, six players playing particularly well. Lee, Griffin, Xavi, Dabizaz, Domi. I think the wide players in protecting and limiting Giggs and Beckham, the back four, it goes without saying, will have to, have to defend well and not concede a goal, I would suspect, early in the game. I think Hamam and Speed and centre midfield are a good duo. Good at going forward, speed can drive forward and score goals. Good in the air, might be a threat. Hamar, lovely striker of a football, the threat is there. But after the disappointment of last year, I'm sure this man is up for it. He knows the responsibility on his shoulders. He carries the captain's armbands. He probably carries all the hopes of every Geordie supporter in this ground at the moment. Will Alan Shearer, can Alan Shearer win the game for Newcastle? Well, distinct similarities about the respective routes to Wembley, both United's drawn at home in each round, both...